To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello, and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 3, Say Hello to Yahweh, the second creation story, part A. Like Buzz Aldrin, who followed Neil Armstrong, like the pilgrim ship Fortune, who followed the Mayflower, or like the sprinters who came in long after Usain Bolt crossed the finish line, so goes the second creation story of the Bible. It is mostly forgotten and generally ignored. Even though it's ignored, parts of it were incorporated into how we remember the creation story. Unlike the first story, here the two humans are characters with feelings and arcs. The first man is lonely. He needs companionship, so he gets a girlfriend from one of his ribs. That was conspicuously exported from the second creation story and incorporated into the first one. But wait, you're probably saying there are two creation stories? So few people know about it, you would think it wasn't just plainly written there, right after the first story we went over in our first two episodes. How could there be two different stories of how the world was created by an omnipotent, all-powerful, all-knowing God? That sounds strangely non-monotheistic. So as we did with the first creation story, we're going to divide it into two parts. In the next episode, we'll talk about the local aspects of this creation story. But first, we want to address the differences between the two stories, between the two gods that created the world in those two stories. And there's loads to unpack. Hi, Henri. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. So there's another creation story. That's weird. To me, it's pretty uh, astonishing uh, that uh, you have a somewhat completely different creation story, a different version of how the world was created, and it's completely ignored. Also astonishing that the fact that it's, to me, it's, it looks like a completely edited <laughs> version of something else, because the first, uh, the first creation story is pretty different even in its, in its mm. feeling, uh, in its uh, vibe. Right. As we said in uh, the, the last episode, the vibe there is very abstract. It's like a, yes. a, real, a real force majeure that you can't even identify with. And suddenly you have a name. Suddenly God, has a God, name. God has a name. Okay. In English, it's God, the Lord God. Yeah, that's in the King James translation. In Hebrew, it's pretty much clear. It's a different name. Okay, so the name is Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Who's that guy? How, that guy when, when did he come into the story? <laughs> I, I don't remember that he, that he was here in the first one. That's weird. Some, it's a new character, basically. And uh, it's not the same God, even. The, the God that created there was a completely impersonal God. Uh, he created and saw that his plan, his plan worked, basically. Yeah. So it was good. And it, all, it was all logical. And yeah. uh, you have reasons to everything. Yes. And it was all order, order for the for the benefit of yes. human beings, male, female. Yes, the, the first story starts with chaos and ends with, or, with order. This story starts... The world is already exists. There's no chaos. It's no. just there. The, the terrain is there. Just no people, no vegetation. A hint to the agri- agricultural society that hears the, the, that listens to these stories is like, uh, the first thing is, uh, is, is putting sowing, seed, sowing, sowing seeds, seeds and uh, bringing down rains. It's yeah. like the basis of your human experience yes. is the fact that uh, you need to uh, <laughs> to work the gr- right. to work the the land right so in the first one like the the spirit of the lord uh, floats uh, above the water here there is already land they yes. can't even imagine not having just the land there and the sky and the stars everything is there and the pinnacle of this creation is a garden which is kind of weird when i think about it because <laughs> it's a beautiful garden it's a beautiful garden but maybe my uh, my theory about this is a little bit biased but by my knowledge but this god yahweh is probably a southern god a desert god so for southern a, israel southern israel, israel. Yeah. The, even the egyptians back uh, in the 12th or 13th century bc bc mentioned uh, nomadic people they called them shasu uh, which uh, w- which worshipped Yahweh, Yahweh, wah, 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 whatever okay. worshipped. So th- yeah. the origins of Yahweh is probably a desert god. And f- for me, to put the center of the universe, the pinnacle of creation, as a garden is very much <laughs> telling that the most rare 
the rarest thing you can see in your day-to-day <laughs> and experience ah. is a beautiful garden right. lush full garden right. you, with you, every, your every needs right. are taken care of right so if your creation story takes place in a in a jungle if that's where you live then the world is created totally differently exactly you don't you have a go. garden in the middle of jungle exactly. i don't need more plants i have enough plants that's okay i'm fine rain i have everything water that's not a problem here So to that point, okay, we're going to go into all that in t- w- with more detail as we go on uh, with this podcast. But uh, you were saying two different peoples uh, wrote the, f- the, the first two stor- uh, stories. Yes, in two different yeah. times, basically. The origins, according to scholars, uh, the origins of the first story is by some kind of a mix of Canaanite, northern, if you look at the map of, map of Israel, is northern Israel. Canaanite people, uh, polytheistic, uh, which influenced from Mesopotamia and other, you know, Bronze Age societies, the, the Ugarites, Ugarites, whatever. Yeah, whatever yeah. So, yeah, they, ha- they have like bigger towns, more settled, more commercial, more, su- more, more successful. Yes, more, uh, it's a little bit anachronistic to say it, but more globalized. Less. Yes. Yes, there are the, there yes. are along all the trade routes. Less isolated, as you would expect from desert people, nomadic people. They're pretty is- pretty much isolated. For me, there's an obvious editing job here. The the, the chapter begins with the last right. uh, sentence, logical of the, sentence of the previous episode. Yeah. The, 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 he created the, the Sabbath and then he rests. It's in the beginning of this episode. Yeah, of the second episode. Uh, then suddenly. A different creation story and it the cognitive dissonance yeah. is so severe that even we thousand years later <laughs> yeah. in our popular imagination we completely forget it we according to us even if you if you ask anybody f- here from the street here in israel uh, in israel in america in the uh, united states with no but like we know our bible here because you study the bible and you and you're tested with the bible and still nobody knows uh, and my mom her dad was very religious she did she was like what So I want to read it just for people to, it's like uh, you were talking about the cognitive dissonance. It's like, I remember reading uh, a clash of swords uh, in the songs of ice and fire uh, series. When you get to the red wedding, you like read through and you don't understand what you're reading. You're like, what, what is happening? So this is the same. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day the Lord God, Yahweh, God, Yahweh Elohim, made the earth and the heavens. It's like, what? Didn't you just say that uh, he already created it and made it and now he's resting? But now, here comes... Now here comes the story. That's what they're telling you. Okay, here comes uh, comes the way that it was made. That's... So... And when you say it in English, it sounds so Shakespearean, but when you read it in Hebrew, it sounds also... To me, to me, maybe I'm a, again, maybe I'm a, a I'm wrong. I'm a hater, but to me, it sounds on the scale between Shakespeare and some guy in the market that yells at you. It, for me, it's closer to the guy in the market. <laughs> and there's this repetition in Hebrew. It sounds okay. Let me read it in Hebrew. Street like yeah, and then translate it like more verbatim. Okay, it's very simple. These. Are the, uh, these are the stories of the sky and the land when they were made on the day that Yahweh Elohim made, made the land <laughs> and the sky. Again, so that's, you have the sky and the land and then the land and the sky. This is like very, very simple. So you can imagine some... Uh, it's like cliff notes. I feel you, this is like cliff notes story. <laughs> you can imagine somebody say, says that in the King's uh, translation of the Bible. And you can imagine some, I don't know, fancy aristocrat, uh, scholar... Uh, reading aloud these uh, magical words and I imagine like this is the story of the God that created the God after he created the, the world that created the world <laughs> listen 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 <laughs> he has an Israeli accent this uh, <laughs> stupid fellow that he just said <laughs> for some reason okay. uh, I think it's a more appropriate way of uh, imagining the Bible is to listen to it in its original accent tones, the intonations, the aggressiveness, the, the feelings. And to me, it sounds much more like this. Like, this is the story God created. He created the, <laughs> the world. He created the world. You know? Yeah. So, and here also, it's done in one day. Everything is done in one day. 
made. So it starts with the rain, as you said. Life starts with rain, okay? And then with the garden, including the tree of life and the tree of knowledge, good and evil. The fact that it's, there's no days to me, it's also uh, something that is uh, it's very telling. <laughs> I don't know if it's telling that it's a desert society, but there's no order. There's no yeah. like a logical yeah. way of thinking yeah. like this, come after this. Yeah. Uh, your your uh, most burning questions about uh, being and uh, the universe it's answered by this logical move yeah. god is a uh, impersonal omnipotent being god's god as you, you can say uh, if you listen to the first episode you understand and creates and he sees it's good good here is more not good in a sense of the yeah, opposite moral. of evil and yeah. moral good more like right Yeah, also in the original Hebrew, tov ve'ra, it's more good and bad, and not evil. Mm-hmm. Evil is rasha, mm-hmm. it's a different word. Yeah. So it's just good and bad. Good and, and this bad. goes also to your point about the non-Shakespearean language. Yes. This is the tree of knowing good from bad. Basically. And it's like good and bad that you st- tell your children, basically. Yeah, okay, so, so, it's not so like talk a little evil. bit about that. It's a, it's a childish story. It's a very childish story that it's, in, it's some kind of an ode to childhood, maybe. Today. And we're going to see that theme uh, coming, uh, coming also in the episode about the Garden of Eden. Okay. But the fact that uh, you have <laughs> that God here is not only personified by name, but also by his fatherly actions, mm-hmm. that his creation are some kind of his, child, his children, basically. The pinnacle of it, it, his creation is his child, Adam. Uh, Adam. Which, Adam, which... Uh, Man. Adam, Adam, man, and Adam, the same root as Adama, Earth. which is land. Earth. Earth and, land, yeah. And I also learned that uh, in Latin it's pretty much the same. Uh, humus comes from humu, Earth, humus? something. Yeah, humus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing that uh, I think it, it tells us that this is basically a story about children is the last phrase of this uh, episode that it says that... Uh, They were naked and they weren't feeling ashamed. Why we, do we need to know <laughs> this? It, does, it has nothing to do with <laughs> what you said uh, uh, until now. Okay, <laughs> so they're naked and they're not ashamed. Maybe it's because when you already imagine the story, and maybe even for the people who told this story, then you, when you imagine something pure, you imagine it naked. And it's basically a children's story. So and children's, children are naked and they're not ashamed because they're not... Yeah, Dif- different yeah they're not sexual people yet they were naked but they weren't ashamed and then the right of, and wrong good and bad it's like the most basic of basic of basic of education that you can have yeah. you don't need a system you don't need yeah. to have teachers yeah. right and wrong you say this no a child eat uh, dirt and <laughs> shit from the desert no 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 Yeah, you give him a pita, good. <laughs> yes. Good. Pita is Greek, by the way. But okay. Pita is Greek? Okay, so well. And the garden is basically like Adam's playground, you know. Everything is there is for some kind of an entertainment value because the logic behind it is not, he saw it, was, it works that, that for that is correct, as we saw in the first, right. uh, ep- uh, right. in the first creation story. Here it's only to the benefit of... Of the child's entertainment. Yeah. Not, not only entertainment, it says, so after the man was created, the next verse, Vayitzmach Yahweh Elohim in Adama, kol etz nechmad lemare vetov lemachal. Yahweh Elohim sprout from the ground, a tree that is nice to look at, and a tree that is good to eat. So this is already for him, not only entertainment, just survival and living in the world. Ah, okay. Okay, go on. The entertainment part is my interpretation. In the text, it says, the God saw that Adam's being alone is not good yes or in parentheses that it doesn't work <laughs> I created a <laughs> yeah I created, lonely yeah I created this magnificent being that has the most magical powers any living creature on earth there has are, there is no living creature on earth it's just like the trees and the rivers and all the gold and all the places and then it just no but the then world. he created he creates adam and he creates the other animals and then the other animals for him yes. and he's the one who gets to to name them yes so here when it says right it is not good that the man should be alone so this contrasts really well 
this God, Lord God, Yahweh God, with the previous God of the first uh, story, where everything that he does, he says, ooh, this is good. Everything is good. Here is like, oh, I done fucked up. This is not good. This is not good. <laughs> so that's a nice contrast. Uh, what's funny to me that in the text, uh, Adam gives names Adam. to all... Adam, what's Adam? Adam? Adam is an American. Adam, Adam. Adam <laughs> gives uh, names to all the animals and the, the stuff. Which is like, a, to me, it's some kind of a intuitive understanding that the biggest difference between us and other living beings are the fact that we can name names. We, we have language. And it's funny to me that he gives them the name, not God gave them the name. Yeah. Again, it's a very intuitive, intuitive understanding. But mm. they, uh, they recognize we speak, we have words, that is our power. That's uh, cool to me. And I want to go back to your point about the Shakespearean language. Okay, verse 17, right? So this is like in Hebrew. I will translate it uh, to the best of uh, my ability in the simplest way. And from the tree of knowledge, good and evil, don't eat from him. Because the day you eat from him, you will die. <laughs> you will die <laughs> twice, not too much. This is basically the text. But in the, in the Shakespearean version, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat for it of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Wow, wow, wow. So this is like uh, so many words <laughs> for something very. Like a, the tree, don't eat. If you eat, you die. Yeah.